Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. Today we have a special guest who was a former Disneyland cast member, D Magic Girl. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, and today we're going to get into a whole bunch of busy topics. It's going to be great coming right from a former cast member, Imagineer. Uh, we have lots of stuff to talk about, but let's go get right to it right after this. Well, so you are a Disneyland skipper, Jungle Cruise skipper, or Disney World. Disneyland, Disneyland. Nice. What, uh, when did you just work there? Uh, I worked there in 2009 and 2010, so a long time ago. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Over a decade ago. Look at that. But yeah, it's obviously some nice memories because, you know, everyone to go follow her Twitter. She has some great memories. She just posted a couple for the birthday. Celebration, 69 years old. Can you believe it? Can you believe it survived this long? It's crazy. Like, incredible. So what was your favorite part of being a John Cruz skipper? Well, most of the time, my favorite part was entertaining the guests that came through from different walks of life. However, I really loved encouraging the younger children, the younger guests that were visiting um, to help drive the boat or have them have an experience you know they'll, they'll come up to me and say when i grow up i want to be a jungle skipper just like you and so Aww. like yeah so like what someone did with me when i was a kid i was i went to disney world i grew up going to disney world that, that was my home park uh i got to drive the jungle cruise boat as a kid and it kind of put that love in for for that ride into my heart and so i tried to pay it forward with a lot of other tinier guests <laughs> so on the for the jokes part yeah, you know, they each say that like around the same things, but do you guys have to add your own flair and make up your own? Like, if you have a good idea for like a good joke or a different take on a joke, are you allowed to like say it or do you have to stick to the same joke script? I, I don't know how it is now, but back in the day, you had to get everything approved um, by, by hmm. Disney managers, you couldn't go off script. Okay. I mean, people did, and it was just mm -hmm. a matter of getting caught caught or not mm -hmm. um well, but so if, you I, like it, if you have like your own idea you can like pitch it to them and if they say yes you can go oh that's pretty cool so that way it's kind totally. of that can, each person has them little you know yes like a different ride each time basically but that's cool yeah well and like for the jingle cruise they actually asked a lot of the skippers to help write the puns or for that Ooh. script so that like they do take active feedback from from skippers for certain jokes. It just depends, I think, on the subject matter and time of year and what's going on. But for the most part, they like to keep the core jokes because people come back and expect that you know what is the Jungle Cruise without the backside of water? You know uh, exactly. I mean, it was even in the movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so okay, so did you make up any jokes? like that you like get up that got approved that were off script um uh, no i didn't i didn't do any of that no i uh i was a, a, a good cast member <laughs> yeah, good, yeah we like it nice and respectful that's those are the best ones those are the best ones well, i wanted to keep that job <laughs> uh, yeah and yeah you kept for all two years that's a, that's a nice amount of time man. 2009 Ooh. disney was a different place back in 2009 it really like, was. Like, that's crazy. Like, my goodness, say there was no reservations in 2009. That's for sure. No, nope. <laughs> man. Yeah, and the cost to get in was not as much. It was it was a totally different yeah, how, world back then. How much was that? I was in? I'm 28, so I was like kind of a child back in 2009. Like, I'm not enough to pay attention to how much I got it. How much do you remember it was? If you remember, what was the gate price, entrance price, just the one part? I don't remember. I think the gate price was around 118 around there. It was definitely in the hundreds, okay. like 96, 96, huh. 98. So that was like right around 100. the time where it just kind of just started creeping up over the triple digits. Wow. Yes. And I remember parking being like, it was, it was like nothing. <laughs> it was like I bet. Nothing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's what now it's like up was to it, like it, what 40 yeah about like 30 35 ish yeah Man, was it as crowded back then no actually 
I think social media has made it a lot more crowded and a lot more busy. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it was talking uh, they were busy. T there was busy. There were busy times a year, like Christmas, mm -hmm. New Year's, you know, and summer. Yeah. But it, yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't like it is now, where it's sometimes it's like every quiet. day. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's pretty insane. Well, that, that's pretty cool. What, why did you or so did you want to get like promoted or did you like stay at the jungle or did you like jungle cruise and want to stay at jungle cruise and and then you just like left for diff different reasons or yeah or yeah so i left for a few different reasons one of the main reasons was i wanted to uh like i loved being a skipper but i didn't want to do it for the rest of my life um also mm, living in socal sense. it's Ooh, near expensive. impossible yeah. near impossible to live off a disney wage which is a whole different topic for another time, but they should definitely pay their cast members more. Okay. Um, it was, yeah. So, but I left cause I went, I wanted to get my, my degree. I wanted to go back. I wanted to go to college. I, I joined Ooh, Disney right nice. after high school. Yeah. I left right after high school and went to work at Disney. Um, and it was a really great experience. I learned so much. Um, but like, I definitely got to the point of burnout and was like, okay, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm ready mm -hmm. to move on to the next step. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. It's a right out of high school, and that must be a really fun job right out of high school. That's it was. It, my 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 friends and family joke that I joined the circus. <laughs> so funny. Oh man. And yeah, you mentioned the wage, and uh, obviously in two days are going to vote. Some unions, are, a lot of them, are going to vote to potentially strike. Do you think this strike will happen? You think Disney will will settle? With the cast members, or do you think they'll allow them to actually strike? Because that would be up to 40,000 people, right? That would be a definitely a big impact to the resort, especially during D23. So, do you think they'll let that happen, or what do you think is going to happen now? Jeez, I, I've thought about this from multiple angles because part of me thinks, and this is Bob Iger, Bob Iger does not like to negotiate during strikes at all. And we saw this mm -hmm. with the writer strike where he basically yeah. told the writers like and he called like, them out. Yeah. Was like Yeah, yeah. He was just like, it? bye. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, oh wow. So I, I don't know. Like I, I could see it going I could see it going both ways. I could see them going on strike um and it crippling the resort. And then, you know, the thing is Disney always thinks that there is someone willing to take their job, like someone else's job. Mm -hmm. There's always a line. And I think that used to be pretty true, but with the mm -hmm. cost of living in California they can't afford to keep paying their cast members the way they do because there's other mm -hmm. options. There's better opportunities and to mm -hmm. be treated badly by, by guests all day <laughs> and then not be paid in a way that is like, like just livable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I could see, I, I guess I could see it going both ways. I, part of me thinks they will go on strike and it's going to be a, a big mess. Yeah. Cause yeah, you're, you're right about that. You know, taking somebody's place because you know, a lot of people after you know, after COVID, when they reopened, you know, and a lot of the cast members, former cast members, went to work at the hotels that paid like twenty five, starting twenty five dollars an hour, and stuff. Like literally, could be yep. right across the street. Um, so yep. you know, yeah, there's maybe uh, not too many people in a desperate rush um, to potentially take someone's place. So um, that would be a very curious situation playing out there because uh, yeah, that's a, that'd be a definitely a crippling impact. During a time when absolutely it's it's uh one not so busy but two during D twenty three, be pretty crazy and you know you mentioned rude guests well I feel like and that's one I feel like one of the biggest changes from two thousand nine when you were working there because in two thousand nine there weren't so many things to cause them rude guests you know, high prices reservations lightning lane plus lightning lane single blast this that you know, yeah like all these small things definitely cause like rude guests so i feel like back in you know, 2009 i feel like everyone was much happier like i'm sure there's a couple yes. of rude guests because it was yeah crowded or, you know it's whatever, always you know, but definitely i think an overall happier vibe unfortunately i feel like a lot of people were angrier or or more upset now. Like for example, I was there on Sat Sunday, and they don't really have a sign on. You know the, the uh, road or the walkway is closed. At Puerto Country. So they don't really have a sign to tell you that. So I noticed a few groups going trying to go to Rise of the Resistance or Star Wars, and they got all the way to the end and realized they uh, couldn't go. And they it's a bottleneck. Obviously, pretty upset. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it's little things like that. You know, when they are and it was hot that day. So yeah, come on. I think 
No, no. I think the biggest biggest difference I'm seeing from someone who is a cast member who's been there before as a kid mm -hmm. and then has has gone multiple times. Before people would complain about the lines, they would complain about mm -hmm. the um just the crowdedness, but now mm -hmm. we're complaining about people are now complaining stuff. about this yes, typical stuff. People now are complaining mm -hmm. about value. They don't feel like they are getting yeah. the value from from their park admission. And I mm -hmm. think that's a very slippery slope and it's it's dangerous because like people when you're when your guest and your, your customer base doesn't feel the value, they're not going to be your like brand ambassadors. They're not going to be your diehard mm -hmm. fans anymore because you're not helping them. And I think the D23 Expo, you know, I think that will determine a lot of what happens in the next, we know in the next 10 years, but how the fan base will react. And if they feel like they're mm -hmm. getting value out of their ticket. Yeah. Cause I mean, it looks like with that thing, it all starts there, right? Like, like, you know, even with like movies, like, Deadpool and Wolverine, right? You have the, all the Marvel fans excited about it. Or even like Inside Out, you have the Inside Out fans excited about it. Then, you know, yeah, it's such a big opening or whatever. Then, then they, it kind of goes out to the other non-fans. They're like, oh, I'm kind of curious. Everyone's talking about this movie. And that the yeah. same thing happens with Disneyland, right? You know, like, oh my gosh, look at this great new ride or whatever. Oh my gosh. And then, or look at this great feel. It was, I had such a great time at Disneyland. And it trickled out, but it go the opposite way too. Like, Oh, Disney was such a pain when I went last weekend, blah, blah, blah. And then that trickles out to the, the more the general audience of really got to appease your, the core people. And, uh, you know, can I feel like sometimes they act a little too complacent, like, you know, like, oh, we're the best. So, no, it's catching up to us. We can do whatever you want. Or we act like, uh, you know, what Bob, Ch Bob Chapek say when they move the popcorn cart then we'll all complain or something because we're all super fans. Like, I feel like yeah. they'll just, they kind of just take advantage of it. You know, they're like, oh, well, just, yeah. we'll go no matter what happens. But, you know, I think you're starting yeah. to see that's not the case because he's talking about value. Some of these days are like Saturdays. It was about $194 just for one park and then you know, at 65 for a park hopper. But you have attractions closed and necessary. You know, you got to do updates and stuff. But you know, attraction closed and you have other attractions that are broken down and then you have reservations and the lightning lane, you know, and uh, the value definitely starts to shrink. They have a, a, a kind of you know, incomplete phantasmic, which we all knew, but sometimes it's even more incomplete where that steam mode pops in, you know. So, you know, when the, uh, you have all, and then then you see here them say, you know, they yeah, have spent $60 billion on, on this thing. And, and that's cool. But then for someone that's not like too much of a theme park fan or, or, or like a, Kind of a casual Disney fan, or just a Disney fan. I feel like some people may hear that sixty billion and think, "Wow, they have all this money." Apparently, so why does the park look like this? Or why are why are, yeah. why are these things broken? You know, why are they yeah. charging me an arm and a leg when they just said they have sixty billion dollars to spend? You know? you know? so yeah, I feel like yeah. It can be a, definitely a good thing for the super fans because oh, we're thinking new things. But for the casual people, uh, I feel like that could be kind of a slap. They may take that as a slap in the face, so. Yeah, you're right. Definitely slipping I agree. slope on how they on, on how to do that. So D23 will be massive because not for 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 just us, but really, really for everybody. Because that because that 60 billion, because they have no political fights anywhere, California, Florida, really got to step up with some, I believe, start dates. Like I remember I was on uh, why had Mondo from Five Fires on, and we were talking about D23. Like, what, what, what will make us happy? And then he asked me, I said, honestly, if they just announced one thing with an actual start date and completion date and didn't, I'd be totally happy, you know, brother, because I'd rather that than five different things that have no idea when it's happening, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, like we I'll, might, I'll we think. might open it over here. We might open exactly. it over there. Exactly. <laughs> like, and we then may never something open that it. keeps changing at the Avengers thing. I mean, 2017 Mission Breakout opened, and they teased the Avengers poster way back in 2017. It's now seven years later. You know, if someone had a baby in 2017, a child being like second grade, and there's still be no Avengers. <laughs> I know. That's crazy. I know. Do and you think so, that we will get more information about the e-ticket attraction? This they, I hope so, because <laughs> otherwise, uh, Avengers Campus, and I'm I'm like the biggest Marvel fan. I love Marvel, but I ran a poll on on the, to my Twitter, and of uh, uh, which one's better, Bugsland or Avengers Campus? And you know, with all the entertainment now being taken away from Avengers Campus. I 
I'm gonna have to agree with the Bugs Land people. Bugs Land won the poll, by the way, but it was more immersive and it looks pretty nice. And I love Time Looks Choo Choo Train. Yeah, but who didn't love that? A, you know, Avengers Campus needs a uh, another ride. If they're gonna take with Doctor Strange show, yeah, reduce the capacity on all these other shows, they gotta give another ride. You can't just keep. I mean, they like they actually have to. I just hope for start date. I don't care what it is, just a start date. Just something, just something. Like January 2025, something, like, you know? Yeah. And then an opening date. So, even though the ride system looks like it could be better, but it's okay because there's just a parking lot. California Venture needs some love. I love, it's like my favorite park sometimes. It switches. But I feel so bad for the thing because, I mean, come on, why are they putting DVC centers in places where they just wouldn't? Guess stuff. Why is the blue sky cellar? That's the oddest thing. A DPC lounge or whatever welcome center in the blue sky cellar when you just approved Disneyland Ford. So, oh yeah, want to show up it doesn't make sense. stuff there. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I mean, if anything, that's kind of like worrisome because are you not? Gonna I remember enough to show like. <laughs> yeah, no, but I remember blue blue sky cellar, and that used to be so much fun to go in there and see what they were mm -hmm. doing with Cars Land and. Yeah, it doesn't make sense why they haven't brought that back for the Disneyland Ford project. Tomorrowland, you have the DVC lounge there. And uh, it's like, I mean, are there that many? You can see people. Do they really have so many spaces inside the park? Like, it's cool. They got their own little tower. That's cool. But like inside the park, like, I don't yeah. know. Uh, what, do, what, what, do you, uh, what do you expect from Disneyland for D23? And, and then what do you want? Design. Okay, so I made I made a list of things that I want, and then I made a list of right. things that I think I think will happen. I think at some mm -hmm. point we will get some type of information around the e-ticket, the Avengers mm -hmm. e-ticket attraction. I don't know if we're going to get a, an opening date, but I I bet they'll say at the next expo or the next G twenty three we'll yeah. have more information. Um, but I bet we'll get some idea of like a timeline. We've only seen that one picture. That's all we've seen, so it's it's a little bit un unclear. Well, let's like, hope. What it will be. Let's hope the picture stays because we've seen like three <laughs> yeah. different pictures, but it's three different things. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, we're gonna have the present thing with one picture. <laughs> uh, I also, I also think for sure we'll get an opening date for Tiana. I think they're one hundred percent going to say when they're going to open Tiana, and I am. I'm actually like I. I don't think based on the updates I've seen um from on from twitter i don't think tiana will be ready for writing but i do you remember when phantasmic premiered at the expo and they let everyone go from from oh yeah they did the like expo? a special thing like, yeah right i could see like in a dream world that'd be really cool if they're like all oh, fifteen thousand of you in the honda center like congratulations mm -hmm. do you get to go ride tiana like i could see them doing something magical like that but honestly it just might be like hey if you look under your chair you are going to have an exclusive pen um <laughs> it's probably going to be something like maybe maybe that or maybe not at well, all an exclusive I, pen that uh, you still have to pay for but it's 50 percent off <laughs> exactly exactly uh we've already charged you um yeah, exactly <laughs> But I definitely do think, though, we will get more information about the Disneyland 70th anniversary celebration and kind of get more information oh, yes. about what that's going to look like. Um, I bet I'm betting that we're going to get a return of a night show, a night firework show, like Remember Dreams Come True, or like very similar to what they had for the 60th anniversary diamond celebration. It's going to be something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that they're going to do a lot of like major updates until then. I know like they're going to fix some things, but I don't think we're going to see major updates to Disneyland until after the 70th anniversary. And I think I could see them bringing back paint the night. I think that's a pipe dream. And that's one of my dreams is them bringing back pipe, paint the night, but I could also see them trying to bring back the main street electrical parade. I, I can kind of see yeah. both scenarios. Um, <laughs> I could see them doing either one of those things. Um, I also think one of my dreams is for them to announce the Tomorrowland refresh, like, and they're bringing oh, back the people mover. Do. And they're just cleaning it up and we're making it look like, you know, like a really good land again. I, that's one of my dreams. I don't think it will ever happen, but uh, a girl can dream. I do think that we will also hear about um, like an update to Disney Springs, like a Disney Springs-esque mm -hmm. update that's going to happen to downtown Disney to make it more aligned with what they have in Florida. I think we'll see something like that, especially with the addition of Din Tai Fung and Portos. Mm -hmm. um, 
So that's kind of what I think is going to happen. I don't think, I, I think there's going to be like announcements, but I really think it's all going to be Disneyland forward based. And I don't think we're going to get a lot of information about it. I think they're going to talk about Pandora. I think they'll talk about the new ride system that it's very similar to what they have in Shanghai pirates. I think it will be something like that, but I don't think we're going to walk away. My biggest fear. And I've said this on Twitter and I, I've said this time and time again, like, is they're going to do the same thing that they did with Epcot, where we all got so excited for this massive facelift oh, that yeah. this beautiful Never park needed. Half of it. Yeah. 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 And I don't think they'll get away with all of that with Disneyland, but I think that like they might they might use this as an opportunity to blue sky. And then like when you know, when it comes to reality, it's going to be like in, you know, 30 years, it's not going to be even close to what mm -hmm. they talked about. Yeah, and you know, yes, because I'm, I'm expecting, again, well, that was the blue sky, but I don't think you can take the blue sky for Disneyland Florida, but as long as we get one concrete thing, then I think I'll be, I'll be, okay, I'll take it as a win. Uh, right. Avengers, Avengers, help me with the concrete thing. Tiana's doesn't count because it's already on construction, so the Avengers have to be the concrete thing, and then... Blue sky can do whatever you want. Although Avatar, I feel like you have a little more, con little more concrete details on that. But everything else besides that could be blue sky. And I'm like, oh, oh that's exciting for the future. See, Ooh, at least we get this now. That's what I, I think they're using the Honda Center as a giant focus group. Like just to be like, what do they think? <laughs> what is like? What? How? How are they reacting? Um, kind of, kind of like what they did at the last expo, where they're like, "What's behind the mountain?" Like, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure that's not what they're gonna do here. It's be like we could do this, we could do that, we we might behind do that, we may not do that. <laughs> is it Coco? Boo! No, it's not that. <laughs> it's not that. It's Definitely not that. Yeah. Ooh, yes, it's that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah 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 like that's what i you know it's that's what i think potentially might happen they might be like um everyone vote vote here and we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah, well they have the disney survey takers on the stage okay yes yes okay yep yep they like that they, they didn't like that <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly exactly yeah that you're not allowed to leave the room until you fill out a survey like i could see that happening too like you know i i also just i, I think it just depends on like I think it depends on, uh, I'm going to say the vibe. Like, I think, I think that they are monitoring a lot of social and like yeah. trying to please the core fan base, but they're just, Disney is so concerned on um, saving money and being more cost effective that they don't, it would be interesting to see. I could also see them talking about the revamp of a fast pass system, something similar, like what they did. <laughs> Oh yeah, that that'd be nice. Honestly, if they can just do a mic drop of reservations, we'll be ending at Disneyland. I'll take that as a win too. Oh, see that that's a dream too. Yeah, yeah, it, it really cramps my style having the reservations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because last weekend I went into the park. Oh, I actually made one for California Adventure. You can modify it until like midnight. And I didn't realize until I was driving there, I'm like, oh, man, I have to get to Disneyland to film this video because I, I couldn't be there for too long. And I stuck in California Adventure for an hour and a half. I'm like, come on, man. I went to the person. I'm like, can you please change it? I made a mistake. Look, look, look. And please, it was like an hour to go. They're like, oh, no, it locks us out of the system. I'm like, all right. So I walled my way to California Adventure. I'm like, yeah. come on, man. Well, and and at the at the point your system is blocking you from making magic for your guests, I think that's a problem. Like a cast exactly. member should have the ability the ability to be like, oh yeah, like I'm sure parties make reservations for separate parks on accident. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it happens all the time. Like cast members should have the ability to fix that because that's good customer service. That's good frontline communication. So it's always weird to me that when I talk to cast, they're like, well, we're bogged down by this procedure and that's why we can't do this. And it's like, that sucks for the cast member because that just means that they end up with more abuse. <laughs> exactly. And again, at least the ones again, those rude, um, rude guests. Uh, the, the silly policies. I mean, it, it's it's crazy. Uh, I, I, I again, if these two of these was filled with overriding policies, that would <laughs> be a win there. But yeah, you no. Know, the uh, the parks panel is interesting because it's it's one of the shortest panels of the Honda Center one. Interestingly, uh, but there's like seven parks in only an hour and a half. 
and they say musical performances. So I, I'm just a little, just a little bit concerned that there's just too uh, short of time to actually say anything. If we're gonna like, there's gonna be some fluff in there, and there's gonna you know, the, the, like the cruise lines in all the parks. I'm like, yeah, uh, is there enough to stay? Yeah, but uh, they're not. I'm well, not gonna get anything if they one thing per park, and that's it. It seems very short. It's 90 minutes. I'm a little concerned, but I have cautious. They're gonna be like, come back next year for the real, <laughs> for the real announcement. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I, I hope they know how big of a deal this is. I think I, I think they do, but I, I really hope they do because like I think they're gonna make a huge deal out of Tiana. And like the fact that it's open at Disney World and it's coming soon, and there might have we might have like someone from the ride come out and perform a song. The song, like I could see it happening, where they really are like spending time burning on what's already what we already know about, mm -hmm. and like oh look, like we're gonna do a performance like from a e-ticket attraction that might happen in Avengers. But enjoy enjoy all the like the face characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see that's the problem because last year twenty three isn't like twenty minutes on Tiana's. I'm like, whoa, this is a long time. <laughs> yeah, just be a great yeah. time, right? But boy, this is a long time. And I, I found right. myself um, looking at my watch, like, okay, how much time's left? Okay, I think I think we're out. And then like, oh no, it ended. So, I think no, I, but it's uh, but I mean that's true, like. I'm afraid they're going to burn time doing it, doing like performances and not actually talking about, I'd actually even on like, honestly welcome them coming in and saying like, we have a lot of ideas. We have a lot of things we're working on. Here's what we know for sure is going to happen versus like all these things that they don't know are going to happen yet. Because like, sometimes they have great ideas, like having free roaming mm -hmm. droids around star Wars land. That's a great idea. And mm -hmm. then they cut it and you're like, okay, well, I hate knowing what could have been. <laughs> like, Exactly. Now, it was nice when they had them out for, I think, um, for a couple of weeks. It was hopefully they come back, but no, um, I never got to see them personally, but it was, I saw them on video. It looked pretty cool. But uh, yeah, Tiana, at least we'll have something to look forward to there. Have you written the Florida version? If not, are you excited I for haven't. the Disney version? I am headed to Disney World in two weeks, so I will be able to write Tiana then. And then I hope to, I'm excited to write it. I have actually avoided all spoilers. I haven't watched anything. I have not watched. I've literally muted. So I, I'm, I'm going in completely blind and I'm really oh, excited about it. Oh, this is great. Because when you, after you write yeah. it, you have to come back on and do a comparison between the absolutely two. Will. Uh, absolutely will. Uh, yeah, absolutely will. You know. Absolutely <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of you know, uh, biased opinions out there, but since you have actually no idea what's happening, this would be very I don't. I don't. I'm very curious. Same thing with Country Bears. Country Bears, you know, premiered open today. The new. Bears. Oh yeah. I haven't watched oh, any of it. Oh, happy birthday, Disneyland! I forgot it. July seventeenth. Yeah. Happy birthday! Yeah. I don't know if Disney made a post about that, but happy birthday! <laughs> happy birthday, Disneyland! We love you. Um, yeah. So I have I've avoided spoilers for that as well. So I'm going in blind to both those attractions, and I plan on talking about like what I thought about it and like how like the perspective is because you know online you can. Mm -hmm. You can make opinions on things, and I really try to experience it first before I make an opinion. So you went to Disney World a lot. So you went to the country for the original version. Yes, I, yeah, I grew up I going to Disney World. The original version, yeah. and grew up, grew up going to Disney World, and then we moved to California in 20, 2003 and then I Disneyland became my home park. So interesting, yeah. Disneyland had the country bears at one point too, right? Yes, they did. And when I did want them to bring leave? it back. I don't remember. It's when they put Pooh Bear there in there. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the uh, Pooh took over. Let me see. Um, I, I don't think I'm trying to figure out if I was I guess I must have been alive when they were here. Yeah, you should have been. The another the other pipe dream I have is that they'll announce the country bears are taking over Grizzly, Grizzly Rapids. And they bring the country bears oh, to Grizzly Rapids. Wow. Okay. So when did we open in 2003, the year you moved here? Isn't that crazy. So yep. you just missed the country bears out here. Yep. Um, but yes, I'd love the country bears to be uh, overlaid to Grizzly Rapids because they need some, some sort of animatronic that would be nice there. But it's just a kind of a blank canvas and it fits an IP and it's an IP that would fit quite nicely with that uh, with that ride. Yeah, so, I think so. 
Especially with Smoke Jumpers Grill having a lot of nods to the Country Bears, the whole soundtrack, background mm-hmm. soundtrack is Country Bear songs from the old the old ride. Um, so like I don't know, there's a lot of synergy, and then they put they put Big Al, they put that big statue of Big Al near Grizzly Rapids. Mm-hmm. And yes. I was like, "What are you doing? There? Are you teasing? Are you teasing me? What what what's this about?" <laughs> exactly, like that'd be very cool. That'd be in the week. The whole. Like, they can rename the area Bear Country. Oink, oink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. I didn't think of that till now. <laughs> so, your what is your favorite Disney park and why? My favorite Disney park. So it's hard. I have two, um, but my my probably my most favorite is Epcot because of my memories there as a kid. Um, oh. I. Grew up going there, so I have a lot of fond memories of like the edu edutainment of learning, um, you know, learning about the land, learning about the aquarium, learning about the body and the you know the wonders of life pavilion, um, and just between the different cultures and the different food, like it really encouraged me to travel and, and get outside my bubble. Um, so whenever I'm I'm in Epcot, I'm really happy, and it's just it's my favorite park. Um, with a close second being Disneyland because I worked there, and Disneyland mm-hmm. feels like home. Um, but they both, one is more nostalgic for me and one is home. So it's kind of hard to pick, ah. but I would say those those two are the top contenders. So what's your favorite country in Epcot? Ooh, that's a good question. So I would say food-wise, for me, it's the Germany Pavilion. Um, I love that uh, caramel. Yes. <laughs> that caramel's amazing. But I also love going to the beer garden. Um, you know, my family is German, so there's a lot of like uh family memories with the food um and the culture. But uh there, you know, I, I really love I think that is a it's a darling um it's a darling country. I think it's great. I'd like to see them add more countries to Epcot. Uh Brazil. When yeah, when- South America. Yeah, I you know what? I think Brazil would be great. We have a Brazilian steakhouse. You theme it after Walt mm-hmm. and El Grupo when he goes to South America. I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of synergy there. So since Epcot is your favorite park, you're the perfect person to ask, what do you think of the Epcot transformation that has just been complete? I think it's um I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. have you been have you seen some of the new things like a journey of water and, yes um, so so i went Guardians. to i was in at, yes i was at epcot in march um mm. i think that the added additions are great for what for what it is uh i think that there mm. could have been more and i was still really looking forward to the more i was especially looking forward to the mary poppins ride and i know that one looked really cool that one it looked really awesome. Um, you know, I was looking forward to just different aspects of it. But that being said, the new open space is really nice. It feels like a park. It feels, uh, you know, almost it's like a cool park mall. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. that I go there. I'm like, this is a theme park. Um, but that being said, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, the roller coaster is is one of the best attractions i've ever been on it's it's like an updated space mountain um and it's it's incredible i've ridden it a few times i've actually gotten the chance i went for a private event and got to ride it uh seven times in a row and my 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 head was spinning afterwards (laughs) but uh it was truly it's just truly a great ride it's smooth it's thoughtful um you know it's just it's it's a really good attraction so i think the updates to Epcot are great. I think it's just a start though. Journey of Water is really, really cool. I like watching and it's not for me. I know it's for the younger guests and the younger guests love it. And that means like, that's a really cool thing. It's also for you when it's hot and humid, you just run away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If it- Get out of the way, I ain't getting hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was also hoping, you know, like uh, for there to be, uh, for them to update the Spaceship Earth. You know, they talked about mm-hmm. updating it. I was really looking forward to that. I was working, looking forward to it receiving some TLC. It, needed, it needs it a lot. Um, you know, I think there's a lot, like I would love for them to come back for D23 this year and talk more about Epcot. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to happen since they just finished, um, but yeah. a girl can dream. Yeah, so the good thing about some of those things, particularly Spaceship Earth and the Mary Poppins, not particularly like large scale. So those, I feel like those are, and even not 
this year, but even even if they're not this year, sometime shortly in the next few years, but those are things that can come back even maybe even bigger and better than ever with a you know, totally. new budget because those are those are those are like like that was like the festival center, which was like this massive thing. Those are like Mary Poppins was nice and small, so I feel like that can be a nice easy project for them to mm-hmm. do. What there is, uh, well, I think 17 you- billions being allocated to Disney World, so that'll be easy, easy updates there. Well, and you see all the benefits that adding Remy to France did, and like exactly what a yeah. great, great, what a great way it plussed the show and made France mm-hmm. just delightful. Um, I would love to see every la- every country have something to offer, whether it's a film or attraction, um, mm-hmm. something of that nature. Yeah, I like yeah. I, when I went there. I did, I did like with the rides they had those the circle vision films i thought those were super yes. cool so i feel like they should definitely add with rides some more of those for different countries because that, yeah. that was such a cool concept but i was like wow you land screen this is great so and doesn't I take a lot also, of space either so no i would also love to see the integration of places where disney has a theme park integrate into the the world showcase so like oh, have yeah. a nod to t- Tokyo Disney, have a nod to Shanghai, um, Hong Kong, you know, I know that, those, that can be dicey with China, but, um, you know, I do think like Paris would be cool to have it, like just a nod mm-hmm. to the fact that they have presence, they have theme parks mm-hmm. in other other countries. I think it would be awesome. Hey, no, it'd be cool. So, you know, Germany has the little model railroad. Well, if in Paris and Japan, you put little model versions of Tokyo Disney in a little. Yeah, and, it would be Paris. awesome. That'd be super cool. Like, wow, that'd be, oh, they should do that. Well, that and I be- think, I think it would be a no brainer for DVC travel too. And to think about like mm-hmm. having opportunities, adventure by Disney. I'm surprised they haven't even integrated more like Nat Geo across Animal Kingdom because they have Nat Geo now. Like mm-hmm. I've been very surprised by that. Yeah. You think that'd be like a no brainer and you know, yeah, they are doing DVC all over the place now. So yeah, that would be pretty cool. Put a little little model of like some Paris and put like a DVC booth right there. I'm like, hey, you want to go here in real life? Yeah, yeah, Adventures by Disney. Here? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Man, again, it's funny. Yeah, all these things, look at not too, not don't, probably don't cost too much. Just very no, small it's just- little updates to Paris, yeah. Epcot. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's little ways to plus the show and increase brand synergy. You know, it's mm. those little things that are really like make a difference and helps the guests make connections like, oh, Disney is not just a theme park. Oh, Dis-. it's it's kind of like how they integrated a little bit of Disney Plus. You'll see it, like a mm-hmm. little bit of it in the parks. It makes more sense. Like you want to keep your guests in your product. And so for me, I don't know why they haven't done these like no brainers as you will, like keeping them involved with your product and let, mm-hmm. let, letting them know you know what's available to them. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, let's see. Lastly here, we did talk about Disneyland Ford, but what was your what is your wish list for Disneyland Ford? Out of all the open spaces okay. there. Out of all the open spaces, what I dream of is better security. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I, am so, I am so tired of the security and I know why they have it. I know it's part of the unions. I know that there's like very, there are intentional things about Disneyland security, but they need to think about making it more streamlined and easier to, to get through. And, you know, the first thing you don't want to do when you have a magical day is start a day in a line. And I think like, mm-hmm. you know, they need to fix that. So that for me is my biggest wish for Disneyland forward. But aside from that, like real, I would love to see more of like Westcott come to fruition. I think California Adventure yes, is that'd be nice. a lot of love. And I think like adding, I don't think the answer is adding another IP land. I think it's finding ways for the, for California Adventure to stand on its own, but also add, add some IP. I don't think you can mm-hmm. get by with no IP anymore, <laughs> but I do think that um, having something that's original and, and different and unique could really drive people to the parks in Disneyland Ford. Yeah, because I, again, another no brainer, at least for me, and it actually fits in the California theme here Latin America land, right? And it'd be like a fantasy yeah. springs type thing, because, uh, but like you're not single IP, but the whole Latin America land that's fits in California, huge population for that here. Have Coco and Conto and yep. find another property 
and boom, we'll be great. And like, put, put your IP yeah. in there. You, and it, it's actually fitting in the California theme, not loosely, but like yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's shocking that we don't have any uh, representation really in terms of Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And I, I could see that being a really natural fit for the park. Um, mm -hmm. And not only does it serve, you know, it, it, it serves the diversity, inclusion, belonging, it adds that, but it's also really important, just representation to have other people in the park. If you look at the park, they're mostly people of Hispanic, Latin American descent, like mm -hmm. that's it's pretty prevalent. So yeah. I'm surprised as well. And I think for a while when they've been testing like day of the dead parties or like, like mm -hmm. the, over by big thunder, when they do the Dia de los Muertos. Um, oh yeah. I think they're testing things to see like how how they react, um, and I you know I'm I'm surprised there's not just more representation in the park. Yeah, because then we have a permanent place that lovely Coco show that happens during the holiday times with that beautiful yeah, and puppet. people love it. Yeah, that's like absolutely amazing. I like I like to see that you know every day instead of just the holidays because it's so cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, that that would be the perfect land for it. But hopefully, fingers crossed in the future. They got their thinking yes. hats on and they are looking and not just shoving frozen in there, but like shoving cocoa in there. You know? A beautiful yeah. cocoa dark ride in that, that life scene. I would love that. Bridge. Like, come on, come on. Yeah. My yeah, goodness. I agree with you. It would be it would be so beautiful. Even look, even if they just blue sky that, it'll still get me excited. <laughs> Cause I'm like, oh, they're yeah. thinking about it. Because that wasn't even in the yeah. art. So my goodness. But yep. like, thank you for joining on this lovely episode of the theme park wizard well it's not a podcast it's just an episode so thank you for joining on the episode miss the magic girl where can everyone find you if you want them to find you <laughs> find me on twitter at dmagic girl uh looking forward to it thanks for having me it's been so much fun of course and i can't wait to have you back on after your trip so you know we have the crunchy bears as well as Yana's reaction, and then yeah. right before we get on this one, then you can compare these two. Oh, it's gonna be great! It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. Man, well, follow her on Twitter, subscribe to me, and have a fantastic day.